everyone, it's Emily here at Thrive Wellness Center in Celine, and I just wanted to come talk to you guys a little bit today about um, um, letting you guys know my background is actually in exercise science. I have a bachelor's degree in exercise science from um, North Park University in Chicago, so that is one of my passions and what I really enjoy doing and talking about. Um, so I'd say, you know, to give a little background, um, I did want to go off and do, you know, personal training or group classes or something like that. But I then came to realize that nutrition is the super core of helping our bodies get healthy and exercise is just a great modality to add on to that. So first I'll go through the um, why exercise is beneficial. There's quite a few reasons, so I'll try to like jot through those pretty quickly. And then we'll talk about how much exercise you should be doing weekly and some other tips and tricks revolved around your exercise regimen. All right, perfect. First we'll start off with the first thing that you should know about exercise and that is that it provides you with healthy hormones, happy hormones. So what exercise does is it boosts things like serotonin, um, it also boosts, boosts your endorphins. So serotonin is really great at helping um, decrease anxiety and depression. So exercise basically fights off different mental health um, issues you may be dealing with or feelings that you may be having. So that's one of my biggest things um, for my patients who are experiencing anxiety or depression. Um, exercise movement helps tremendously and there's so many studies done on this that um, it doesn't necessarily matter if it's uh, 10 minutes of exercise or an hour and a half of exercise just some sort of movement is going to help promote that serotonin which is going to help promote um, overall well-being and less feelings of anxiety and depression so remember that even if you know when you experience those feelings you can get anxious or depressed and be like I only did this for 10 minutes or I don't have enough time to do an hour workout but please remember that you actually still get a ton of benefits from just moving for even 10 to 20 minutes so don't forget that all right and then endorphins are like our happy hormones they just keep our um, mood up and they also reduce the perception of pain so a patient or um, if you're suffering with something like fibro or um, any sort of you know RA rheumatoid arthritis anything like that you're going to decrease the, the perception of the pain and help with that pain overall all right and then lots of notes here <laughs> um, then also it obviously aids in weight loss so if weight loss is one of your goals um, participating in physical, acti physical activity is going to help um, promote that because what it does is it increases metabolism it helps build muscle which muscle burns more calories than fat does so in return again the increase in metabolism burning more body fat instead of storing body fat um, and then also it's good for your muscles and your bones. So what it does is it actually um, plays a role in maintaining bone and muscle mass and it also helps promote bone and muscle mass. So exercise releases hormones that help um, promote the ability of your muscles to uh, absorb amino acids and if you've heard me talk about amino acids before, which if you listen to me talk you might have because I am all promoting of the protein. Um, Amino acids are the building blocks of our bodies that come from proteins. So we have essential amino acids that we have to consume because our body cannot make them on their own. So you consume these amino acids and what happens is exercise helps promote the absorption of these so that your muscles and your bones stay nice and strong um, and build to a healthy level. All right, next we have an increase in energy levels. Movement equals an increase in energy levels. Um, so if you're chronically fatigued or um, you're always tired, that sort of thing, movement is gonna help increase that energy. All right, next we have skin health. So exercise helps promote a natural release of um, different antioxidants. Antioxidants help keep the cells safe and help cell repair. So our skin is basically just a whole bunch of cells that are trying to do their job right and um, stay healthy. So what exercise does is it helps promote the actual health of these cells. So therefore your skin looks nice and beautiful and happy. 
All right, next we have brain and memory health. So when you're exercising, you're moving, your heart rate's increasing, your blood, blood is pumping more, oxygen is getting to places more readily than it would if you were not exercising. What this does is this gets blood flow to the brain at a more uh, rapid rate. And again, it gets oxygen to places that may not necessarily get there when you're just at your normal state. So it's gonna promote brain health and memory health in that way. All right, and then it promotes good sleep. So if you're suffering with any sort of sleep issue, exercise also helps promote um, good sleep overall because for a few reasons, when you're exercising, you're actually um, expending, sorry, I had to take a pause. You're expending energy. So at night, when you are ready to recoup, your body is better able to do that because you expended that energy during the day. All right. And then next, you can increase your sex drive with exercise. So exercise promotes cardiovascular health. Um, it promotes um, blood circulation and hormone balance. So all of those things, if you have a low libido or a decrease in your sex drive, all of those things help increase that and can make that more regular. All right, and then last but not least, it boosts your immune system and it is a natural detox. So the reason why is um, we have this beautiful thing called our lymphatic system, which runs all throughout our body. Um, it, it's awesome if you wanna Google a picture of it. It's a very large system. Lymphatic system only moves if we move it. So it's not like your heart that has a pump um, where your circulation just keeps going and going. Lymphatic system only moves if you move it. So that can be done through things like um, dry brushing or if you did some sort of lymphatic treatment. Um, that's how you can move lymph. You can also move lymph through exercise, especially exercises that are intense ups and downs. So like jumping rope, um, doing burpees, thrusters, you know, everyone's favorite things to do, um, running, that sort of thing. That's going to promote good lymphatic drainage and movement. And you can think of our lymphatic system as like our garbage disposal. So different bugs go there um, to, to hide and for our bodies to help get rid of um, metal toxicity, chemical toxicity, all the different irritants um, kind of get through our lymphatic system. So, you know, your, your um, lymph nodes and your neck can get swollen when you feel unwell. Um, that's just basically them getting clogged up because they're trying to do their job and get rid of stuff, but they need a little assistance. So things like dry brushing, like I said, or exercise can promote good health. Women, um, if you've ever gotten lumps under your armpits, that is your lymph nodes most likely inflamed, irritated because they're trying to push something out. Um, so exercising can help promote that detoxification at a faster pace. And then when it comes to your immune system, um, I really link that with good gut health. So you can think of, you know, when you're exercising, gravity is playing a part in your digestive system. All that's happening is, not to be too blunt, but like you're getting rid of things, you're excreting things, and that's just accelerating the process. So in return, you're getting rid of things that are harming your body, you're boosting your immune system, um, and you're having a level playing field for your gut to be able to fight off anything that it might come into contact with. Because remember, our gut is a huge part of our immune system. About you know 70 to 80% of our immune system resides in our gut, so it's important to keep that nice and healthy. And exercise helps promote that. All right, those are the major benefits of exercise. There's more, but those are the big ones. Um, so how often should you exercise? That's a, a good question. Um, you know, we have our fitness junkies out there who exercise every day. Um, you have people who feel good about getting in on one walk a week, whichever you are, you know, you do what you're comfortable with, what your body's able to do and capable of doing and what is good for your health. As a general recommendation, I would say exercising anywhere from three to five times a week is a good amount. Um, you want to push your body, but you do not want to break down your body. I want to repeat that again. You want to push your body, but you do not want to break down your body. So there's this whole um, culture around exercise that you need to push yourself to the most extreme extreme and it should be this and that. Okay, pain is a way of your body telling you to probably stop. If you're doing something that is painful while moving, you should stop. Um, and I'm not talking like a, oh, this weight is so heavy, um, my biceps getting a little sore already, pain. I'm talking like you're doing a squat and 
you might have put too much weight on the bar or you're running and your knees really start hurting you that sort of pain is your body telling you hey slow down this is a little too much for me right now so listen to your body don't forget that um and then when it comes to the intensity of exercise you don't want to do like an hour hit workout six days a week what that's doing is that's pushing you way too far to the maximum more than likely you're working the same muscle groups um, less than 24 hours apart so that's another big thing that we learn in school that muscles really need uh, about 24 to 48 hours to rest heal and rebuild for you to be the most efficient with your workouts um, again what I kind of said at the beginning I'll reiterate but nutrition is what comes first in all of this so feeding your body the right things while you're exercising is what's going to promote better exercise and better results from your exercise so please focus on that too and not just going to the gym and murdering your body because that's what you're supposed to do to lose weight or to feel better or so on and so forth actually you're kind of nipping yourself in the butt doing that um and then also okay I got off on a tangent. I gotta check where I'm at. So you wanna do a mix of things. So do what feels best for your body, but ideally doing a mix of like aerobic and anaerobic, which aerobic is more, um, what I would say like cardio. So running, um, doing things that have your heart rate high for a steady amount of time. Anaerobic is gonna be things like strength training or resistance training, um, shorter bursts of more intense, um, workouts with a rest in between um, so those are gonna be like your lifting days or maybe days where you're you're doing a hit workout but you have a longer rest period so your heart rate does come back down so a mix of those two is ideal because um, again you're working on building the cardiovascular system and you're also working on building muscle mass which has plenty of benefits um, on your rest days or your um, active days where you still want to do stuff but not necessarily push yourself to the max things like walking or yoga um, are great options yoga can be pretty intense so don't let it um, fool you but if you wanted to do like a shorter shorter practice so like you know a 20 30 minute practice instead of an hour or you wanted to do um, a restorative practice um, which by restorative practice it just means holding um, more low-key positions for a longer amount of time versus flowing and moving through movements at a quicker pace. So it is a little bit more um, less strenuous and um, you don't do as much damage to your body. Again, like it kind of is in the title, you're restoring the body. So those would be options for like an active rest day if you really do want to still be moving but not necessarily push yourself to the max. All right. And then you want to make sure you're warming up and cooling down, okay? You can't just, it's like starting your car in the winter before you actually leave. You don't, if you're in Michigan or somewhere really cold, um, you do not want to just hop right into any sort of exercise, especially an intense exercise. Just like you don't want to get in your car and pedal to the metal in the winter when it's been sitting in the cold for eight hours overnight or something like that. You want to warm up the body, get the blood flowing, get things moving, get your muscles warm. Um, honestly, you want to be breaking a sweat at by the end of your warm up and you want to make sure things are, are going. Um, even if you're like just lifting legs one day, you want to do a whole body warm up because you want to make sure everything is nice and strong, it's going to respond the right way, um, and you're going to get the results that you want. All right, and then you want to make sure you are eating well. Again, um, so eating well before and after is ideal. Before um, having some sort of, um, if you get closer to your workout, I don't really recommend like eating. Uh, there's a really great book about all this um, for athletes. It's called Paleo Diet for Athletes. But an hour before it would be like my kind of cutoff mark for eating anything like decent size um if i'm like oh, i'm about to work out in like a few minutes i might have a drink of our perfect aminos and call it good and start my workout um and i always make sure that i have um eaten that day if my workout's later in the day if it's right in the morning i just do the perfect aminos usually in the perfect reds get myself going that sort of thing um but you want to make sure afterwards you're eating something well-rounded so something that contains high quality protein high quality fats and some sort of high quality carbohydrate so 
you know, you could do a smoothie. That's super easy. You could pre-make it, take it to the gym with you so you have it after. If you're doing something at home, you can easily um, make a, uh, a meal afterwards, meat, vegetables, sweet potatoes, or some quinoa, something that's gonna restore all of that um, depleted nutrients that you just worked off and you did so good at doing that. All right, awesome. And then next you want to make sure you plan your workouts. So that's the biggest thing I feel like to actually having a successful workout regimen is making sure that on let's just say like Sunday, you're like, okay, this is what my schedule looks like. Here's where I'm gonna come in and do my workouts X, Y, Z. Um, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm gonna do my strength training. Tuesday, Thursday, I'm gonna, you know, do yoga or go for a run or go for a bike ride, something like that. Also, I do encourage you as much as you can, if you wanna get outside and move, it's a wonderful way to in increase your um, or enhance your workout even more having the sun involved um, being outside on the ground if you can take your shoes off and just be in the grass if you have a grassy area I would highly recommend it um, getting that frequency from the actual ground from the earth is super beneficial for us all right and then the last thing I want to add just a little, kind of a little happy note um, because I know that this is a stigma as well Please work out because you love your body and you want to reward it, not as a punishment for um, something you ate or wanting to lose weight or anything like that because a negative connotation towards something that's supposed to be really great for us um, yields bad results. So for the most part, usually, um, you know, you could get injured, you could push yourself too much all of those things can happen. So please work out because you love your body and you appreciate your body and it can do all these wonderful things for you. All right, everyone, I hope that you learned some good things about exercise and health. And if you guys have any questions or need anything, please comment below, send us a message. We would love to answer those and we will see you later this week for some more talks on health. All right, bye-bye.